Okay, I think it's now time to introduce you to time series data. Just a quick reminder on the type of data we can have. The most common type of data is cross-sectional data. Okay, so cross-sectional data. Cross-sectional data. And up until now, this has been the focus of my videos. So you have cross-sectional data when you have a fixed point in time and a sample of observations. So for example, looking at the determinants of wheat prices in French cities in the year 1848 would be a study that utilizes cross-sectional data. Our observations are, so observations, Well, our observations are French cities. And most of the time, these observations in cross-sectional studies are indexed by a little subscript I. So, history is all about change, and cross-sectional data is, by definition, static. So, if we are interested in a relationship over time, we are utilizing time series data. Okay, time series data. And for example, if you look at the relationship between wages and the number of unemployed persons in Germany from 1967 to 1978, then you would utilize time series data. Because in contrast to the French example, you're only looking at one entity, Germany. While in the French example, you have different entities, the French cities. And this time, when we're using time series data, you're looking at one entity over time. So your observations are not cities or countries or whatever. So observations. Your observations are years. And almost always they're indexed with little subscript T. Okay, so how do we account for time in regression? Well, that's fairly easy. And uh, basically, all you do is you do the exact same things you've done with cross-sectional data. So let's take a look at a, at a very simple time series regression, okay? So just, just an example. Um, okay, so you have a regression that says y at time t is equal to alpha plus beta times x at time t and some error term at time t. So this looks very familiar, right? You have some variable y at time t and it can be explained by a constant alpha, some variable x at time t times the coefficient of course and an error term at time t. This is basically the same thing we have used in dozens of videos. But note that there's a small difference. The dependent and independent variable and the error term have a little t as a subscript. And if you have watched my videos on, or my video on autocorrelation, you're already familiar with that. So let's take a simple example, okay? So let's take a look at this equation. So population at time t is equal to alpha plus beta times uh, number of industrial plants at time t and some error term at time t. So let's say we want to investigate the effect of the number of industrial plants on, in the Netherlands on the population in the Netherlands from 1820 so from 1820 to um, 1870, okay? This is what we look at. So our dependent variable is population in the Netherlands at year T, and our independent variable is the number of industrial plants in the Netherlands at year T. And as always, we need an error term. Now, remember that this time we don't have single units as observations but every year from 1820 to 1870. So the population, okay, so the population at time 
uh, oops, sorry, at time t equals 1 would be the population in the year 1820. Just as the population at time t equals 5 would be the population um, in 1825. Okay? Of course, your data doesn't have to be on a yearly scale. For example, your data could be on a monthly scale. scale. So, for example, um, if your data is on a monthly scale, then population at time uh, t equals 1 would be the population and um, January and I'm running out of space um, 1820 I hope you can read that and the population at time t equals equal to 5 would be the population in uh, May 1820. Okay, so I hope you get the difference that, and I'm, I'm going to make it a bit clearer. So this right here, this is yearly, uh, if, if your data is on a yearly scale, and this right here is your data when it's on a monthly scale. Okay, so now you get you, now you should get what this little t means over there. Now in principle, you could do the exact same stuff you did with cross-sectional data. So let's say you ran a regression. Oops, sorry. Let's say you ran a regression, and beta would be equal to two hundred. Okay, so beta is equal to two hundred. This means that when you increase the number of industrial plants in the Netherlands by one um, in year T, you would also increase the population in year T by 200. So you see, it's basically the exact same method we've used for cross-sectional data. Now, and this is very important, sadly, things are not that easy. While in principle, you can do the exact same things you do, you do with uh, cross-sectional data, your data for uh, time series regression has to fulfill some very, very important preconditions. And let me be very clear on that. It is very important that your data fulfills these preconditions. If not, you get absolute nonsense results. So make sure you check out the next video because otherwise you cannot utilize time series data. This video was only meant to introduce you to the notation of time series data.